Hey sewing friends. So I wanted to show you these pictures of this woman that came into our accounting office, um, our CPA office a couple weeks ago. As Soon as I saw her come in, I just jumped up from my desk and asked if I could take pictures of her blouse because I really love that it is very stylish. And again, just like the woman in Joanne's who was wearing the sequin shirt, this is another woman who has style. Now, what I like about it is that it's kind of like a high-low top, but it's high in the front and back, and then of course low on the sides. Most high-low blouses or shirts that I see are always high in the front and they get lower in the back. And this one is just, I've never seen anything like this before, and I think it looks great. It looks fantastic. And if you look at the back, if you look at the collar, I don't have a really super clear picture. But see how thick it is? Almost if it has layers. I don't know if it's just a real tight kind of ruffle pushed together or if there's layers, but it reminds me very much of, <clears throat> excuse me, the collars that you would see um, pictures of Elizabeth I in, you know, those big thick collars. That's what it kind of like reminds me up in the back. And in the front, it looks like it's pared down and she has a scarf with it. But what I also like about this woman is that she's, she's an older woman. She, I think she might actually be older than me. I don't know, maybe around my age. But she has style. She cares about fashion. She cares about look or how she looks. But um, she's also owning her age. She's, she's trying to look her best and express her style through fashion, but owning her age and not doing it by trying to look 25 again. So anyhow, I thought I would share that with you because I really, I don't know, I have, I went through, after I saw this blouse, I went through, you know, looking through the pattern books and through websites, indie websites, because I was trying to find something that looks similar. I don't know that this is really my style, but I think I would like to give something like this a try just because it's different. Um, you know, and it's something that I can make out of an old bed sheet or some muslin or something to see if I would like like something like that. So anyhow, I haven't really found anything that looks similar to it. If any of you know or if you've seen a pattern that is similar where it's high and low in the front and, or excuse me, high in the front and the back and kind of low on the sides, let me know in the comments because I'd really like to check out the pattern and see if it's something that, um, that I would want to make because I don't know. It, is this something that you think you would want to make or that you would actually want to wear? I mean, I don't know. I, I think I might want to give it a try. Now, finally, finally, April 15th came and went. Tax season is over with. I cannot tell you how busy I have been starting in February all the way to April 15th. I haven't had any time to sew. You know, it's, I'm not only, like normally I work part-time, but I'm not only working full-time, I'm working full-time plus, like 50 hours a week. Last week we had, six, I think I had 62 hours a week. We're working on Fridays, I normally have Fridays off, I'm working on Saturdays. So I have had no time to sew. Um, I, I think I've gotten one thing that I'll show you here in just a moment that I actually completed, but finally I have time to sew, I have time to, to plan my spring wardrobe. So I'm real excited about that. Now, the last video that I made, I showed you this little shift dress that I made out of a viscose, I don't know, a viscose from Lady McElroy, and then I lined it with a really nice Bemberg lining. And it's just a very simple shift dress. And my plan was to make the Sinclair Harper cardigan to wear with it. And I was going to make that in kind of an off-white, or what I think they called, style maker called a winter white, um, French terry modal. I mean, it's definitely a French terry, but it's very soft and clingy. Anyhow, it's beautiful fabric. And I wanted to make the long version because the one thing I like about the Sinclair pattern uh, or the Harper cardigan from Sinclair Patterns is one, it's a free pattern. So, I mean, what's not to like about that? Then they have several different lengths. They give you a cropped, a regular, a long, and a duster version. And I wanted to make the long version because for some time I've been wanting to have a kind of neutral colored long cardigan in my wardrobe. And I really actually kind of wanted it for the fall, <laughs> the winter and fall, which has since come and gone. Um, because I've seen my, my office manager who is built not quite like me, but she, she's short like I am. She's more of a, 
you know, she's very big and broad on top and then kind of has, has narrow, um, excuse me, has narrow hips and all. But, um, you know, she'll wear a long cardigan. I like, and I like the look of it. And I've seen that in, um, you know, on Pinterest and just in YouTube and, and everywhere. So I like the look of that. I don't know. Do you guys, do any of you guys have long cardigans? Do you like them? Do you wear them? You know, so I thought I would add one to my wardrobe. And the picture that I had in my mind, I thought it would look perfect with this ship dress. Well, it didn't turn out that, that way. And that's because the proportion of either the dress or the cardigan is just wrong. Because the dress is long, it goes to my knee, and then the cardigan is long, and it just looks to me like it's very dumpy. Just, you know, almost like, you know, that old Carol Burnett kind of mop you know <laughs> cartoon where she's pushing the mop just looks kind of gave me that feeling so I started thinking okay so what am I going to make to wear with this dress because I really do love these shift dresses and I love the way you know the Benberg and the lightness of it feels against my legs it's a perfect spring summer dress um, but I need it but I don't want to wear it sleeveless and I, I especially don't want to wear it sleeveless to the office one because I don't think it's appropriate and second the air conditioning is on um, and it's good it's gonna be cold so I thought hmm maybe a Metro blazer because you know since I want to wear it to work um, I thought maybe a Metro blazer would look good so I tried on I mean it's black the Metro blazer that I have is black I need to put that away for until next fall and winter that didn't work right I think I needed something cropped and I thought about shortening the cardigan um, to the cropped version, but I didn't want to waste all that fabric. And then, you know, again, if you guys have a long cardigan in your wardrobe, let me know if you like it and how you wear it. Because one day I did wear it with a shirt that was tucked in at the waist. So, you know, it's, you have that short at the, you know, from here to my waist and long pants. And it did look good. It really was a nice, attractive look. But um, with this dress, not so much. So I thought I needed something short. Didn't want to cut off the cardigan. So I tried my Marlowe sweater. I thought, oh, this is going to be perfect. Not so much because the Marlowe's really kind of baggy and oversized. And again, it just looked frumpy. It looked like I was just wearing something big and, and oversized. And it wasn't the look, you know, it was comfortable as heck, but it just wasn't the look that I wanted to project. So then I started thinking, you know, I had made a bolero jacket when I was doing the Taylor Academy classes. So I tried this on, and you have to use your imagination because I made it out of this black linen, and it's a little short bolero jacket, and I put it on with the dress, and I thought, okay, we're getting someplace on this. There's a couple of things I didn't specifically like about how this jacket looked with the dress. One is that it's very wide around the, I guess, the bottom of it. And if you read, you know, the instructions or whatever that, that come with the, the, you know, the tutorial that comes with the, the pattern, it says that it's, um, how do they phrase it? I don't know, wide at the waist or loose at the waist. Well, it didn't look good, and I had actually gotten two darts and had made two one-inch darts going three inches up, which brought it in closer, and I thought that looked a lot better. So that's one idea that I had. But I'll get back to the bolero jacket in a minute, because what that did is it reminded me of this pattern that I made years ago. It's a McCall's 7254. And I had made this version out of a knit, and but while I was making it, you first make this kind of short, kind of bolero um, one. And I had tried it on, and I remember thinking, oh, well, it's kind of a long story. I'll try and get through it. It just reminded me of like a little bolero sweater. And at that time, I think maybe four or five years prior, I had made... Um, flower girl dresses for my daughter's wedding and one of the girls I made like a little lace bolero jacket and it just kind of stuck with me and that's why when I saw the jacket with the dress it reminded me of this so I thought okay let's make this pattern and so I had taken out the pieces because I had traced them out to make the the big sweater so I traced them out and I laid them out and I first made one out of this 
it's a waffle. It's a very loose, stretchy waffle knit that I kind of had in my stash from Joanne Fabrics. Now, I don't know what I had bought this for originally, and I had obviously made something out of it, but I couldn't tell you what. I can't remember because really what was in there was just like a scrap. You know how when you, you know, you fold it in half and maybe the fold side's really long, but you see that it's cut kind of uneven on the other side, and then you have this tail end piece at the bottom. That's what was in my scrap. So I kind of had maybe three-fourth-ish of a yard of this fabric. So I went ahead and cut it out, and I did kind of like the look. I'm like, okay, this is getting someplace with this. I'm putting the bolero sweater on with my, my dress. But one thing I noticed was that the shoulders were coming off my sleeves. And again, this started to look <laughs> kind of dumpy with me. Um, I didn't like that look. I had wished that the it would come a little bit closer in because, you know, as with most patterns, you know, especially the um, big four patterns, they're drafted for a B cup, I wear a D cup. And that's probably why the last couple of years I have been kind of leaning towards Love Notions patterns, cashmere patterns, you know, um, itch to stitch patterns, because they're indie pattern makers who are actually making cup sizes. So with the big four, I always have to do a full bust adjustment. And it's not that big of a deal, but that's just something I realized that, hmm, I've kind of really been leaning towards the indies lately. So anyhow, I made this up and thought it was okay, definitely wearable. But I wanted to make it again, and I wanted to try and make some adjustments to the patterns. Um, for one, I looked at the pattern. I said, okay, let's start with the right size. Did I choose the right size? Because I had an extra large that I'd cut out before. And I assumed an extra large was like a size 1820, which, you know, would work for me. Um, no, an extra large is a size 20 to 22. Way too big, because in indie patterns, and in a lot of the big four, my shoulders are actually a size 16, and then I need to grade out to an 18 and do a full bust adjustment. I mean, you know, big four patterns. So I went ahead and ordered some fabric. It's kind of, it's a very wide rib knit. I don't know if you can see it, like half inch ribs on this. And it's a thicker fabric, and it has a lot, a lot more body to it. I got this from Style Maker Fabric. I think they called it their winter white, um, I don't know, wide knit rib or something like that. Um, and so I ordered, I think, a yard and a quarter of it just to be on the safe side. And the adjustments I made on the pattern is that I did cut out a size large, so I think the shoulders fit me a little bit better. And then I knew... And this is where I kind of goofed up, uh, you know, kick myself. The difference between the large and the extra large on the side coming forward was an inch. So I wanted to add another inch to, you know, to bring it out. So I should have added two inches to the size large and only because the extra large just needed one inch. Well, what I did is I added an inch. I don't, I kind of got lost in my hack pattern hacking here and I just wasn't thinking. So it kind of still comes to the same place, you know, as far as ending in front. But I did realize that I needed to lower the apex because on a lot of patterns, most patterns, the apex probably always hits me like rip right here. So, you know, I would kind of determined my shoulder, measured down to the apex, realized I needed to lower the apex about two, two and a half inches. So I marked it on the pattern where it should be, cut a square around it, cut it out, and then just moved it down and then blended everything in and retraced it. I then thought, hmm, maybe I should add an inch, a half inch in length. On hindsight, probably didn't need to, probably won't do it again when I make it again, because I am gonna make this again. But let me show you the pattern piece real quick and show you what I won't do or how I'm gonna, how I adjusted it and how I wish I had adjusted it. So after all adjusting it, I went ahead and lowered this, or I, I added it half inch in length here. And then I blended this in, taking this down and blended it down here. Well, what I want to do next time is take it from the bottom here and keep with this 
um, original line and blend this back up to here so that this will be a little bit less because what that does is it gives more of an angle so that the top comes you know down and then it gives more of an angle as it goes to the side which gives the appearance of waist shaping or a waistline and a good example of this is Here's a picture that I got from Pinterest. Now, obviously, this is a model who does have a thin waist. And she's wearing the contrast of black and white. But you can see by the sharp angle of her bolero jacket, see how it kind of creates that waist look to her? Um, kind of like an hour, more of an hourglass versus just a regular curve like this picture here, which looks great. And it does, again, add a little bit more... Um, waist shaping or the appearance of waist shaping but i really like this the the really kind of hard angle or, or you know the more of an angle on on the bolero jacket this is something that i do want to make again because i'm thinking this is my thought okay this is my thought i think that there are probably times in my life when something short or cropped or bolero-ish is going to be a better option than let's say a jacket or a blazer or a cardigan or something so i like the idea of making kind of like a bolero jacket so what i want to do and also to give me some variety to wear this again you know um i have this linen it's a linen viscose mix i think it's 80 percent linen 20 percent viscose it's really a nice fabric i know it doesn't show up on camera as nice as what it really is but I do want to make that bolero jacket. Remember I said I'd come back to this one. I do want to do make this pattern again, only I want to make more of a sharp angle coming down from the front of the bodice towards the waist. And I think, although this has this great um, collar detail here and it flips back, I think though that I might want to do something more de decorative like the Pinterest picture where it has, I don't know, some some scallops or cut out or something. I'll have to give it some thought. But anyhow, that's kind of been mulling around in the back of my mind and that's kind of on my project list to get started. And these are like simple product projects that, you know, I think the pattern hacking is gonna take a day or so, but sewing them up can just be done in an hour or less. They're very, very simple. And another picture I wanted to show you is of my coworker who came to work. This is Linda. And look, she is wearing her denim jacket. Now, I know some of you know where I'm going with this. I was so surprised. She walked, we were super busy. So she walked in and I'm like, oh, hi, Linda. You know, and I wanted to get a picture, but we had to wait until the phone stopped ringing until there was a time when nobody was in the office and all like that. We had to try like three times before we had a time where the phones weren't ringing. Actually, I think another coworker, Michelle, said, I'll answer the phones, but the lobby was empty and I got some pictures of her. Um, hers has embroidery on it. I know a lot of um, jean jackets or denim jackets do have embroidery on it. And it's just another example of how everyone needs a denim jacket in their wardrobe. And so we're making denim jackets this month, okay? We started a Zoom group. It's like a denim jacket group where if you'd like to be a part of it, if you want to make a, a denim jacket and you would kind of like to have a group of uh, gals to talk with, to either bounce ideas off of or to get advice from, or maybe you can offer some advice to people who need some help, you know, with their jacket. We're meeting on Fridays, Friday evenings beginning April 26th. So our first Zoom meeting will be Friday, April 26th at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I know that's kind of a difficult time for some. You don't have to make all the meetings or anything. This is just, you know, something we're doing for fun. But if you'd like to be a part of it, send me an email to thepolysews22 at gmail.com, and I'll send you a Zoom invitation. And our first meeting will be, as I said, Friday, April 26th, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There's, I think, about eight of us so far, and we're all going to be doing different patterns, different fabrics. Some might be using corduroy. Others might be using, you know, denim. Others might be using twill. I mean, it'll be really fun and really interesting to see how everybody's jacket um, turns out. I had this really dark denim in my stash, 
but I realized that this is an eight ounce and I kind of feel that it's just a little bit too lightweight for what I wanted. Um, and then also for summer and spring and summer, maybe a little kind of dark. So I think I might save this and make a denim skirt or something out of it. I really don't know. But I did, again, Style Maker's kind of my go-to place right now for fabric. One, because they're right up here in Washington, and so delivery is like that. I mean, that's a better snap. <laughs> it's like that. It just takes a day or two because they're so close. Um, and then also they're, they're, they have a great selection, and they, um, their prices are very, very competitive as far as what other people are charging. So I thought a lightweight denim would be really good for spring and summer. Um, but then I also thought, but do I want a dark one? So I got a dark one too. These are 11 and a half ounce um, denim. So I think they'll be a better for the um, jacket. And I think I'm going to try and make two. I want to make the Sorrento, the Sew Over It Sorrento, because that's a very classic denim jacket. But then I'm also going to try the Itch to Stitch, because they have cup sizes. So... Anyhow, I'm excited about that project, and I'll be starting that in a couple weeks. If you want to join in, please let me know. Send an email to thepolysews22 um, at gmail.com. We'll get you signed up. So thank goodness tax day is over. I've got lots of sewing cut out here on my table ready to go. Looking forward to making a spring wardrobe finding out what you guys are making for spring and summer too. So that's all I have for today, but hopefully I will see you guys next time. Bye.